Today's build was a little bit different from what I usually do because um, instead of taking uh, a thing and 100% 3D printing it, I decided to use a, a regular core and then 3D print extensions for it. So the first part when I did this was to sand all the interior faces of these pieces because um, if, I, if you don't sand the interior faces then when you're turning the puzzle it feels really rough because all the layer lines rub against each other. After I did that, I took them and I, I power sanded them um, to, for the rest of the pieces. And then I took the, the 3x3 which I was using as the core and I sanded and I, I roughened up all the different faces um, just so that the, stuff would, the, the, the extensions would stick better to the cube. After sanding both the faces and the extensions, it was time to super glue it together. So here's the first corner. Um, you'll notice as I glue the pieces on here, I make sure to keep uh, turning the uh, different faces to make sure that the uh, that the the puzzle doesn't um, get glued together. Here's an example of the pieces that were stuck together, and you just have to break them apart. It's not that hard, and it's not that bad of a problem, but if you let the pieces sort of all get locked up, uh, then when you try to break it apart when all the extensions are already glued onto it, it gets kind of annoying. When I was putting the pieces in, I put a little bit of uh, lubricant on the inside faces because I didn't really polish them, I just sanded them with like 200 grit sandpaper. So I used the lubricant sort of to make them smoother and to dye them black. And there's the last extension glued in place. So after I glued all the extensions onto the core, or the, the mini 3x3, I started sanding the faces. Initially I uh, put them and I, I sanded them sort of like this, um, by like holding the puzzle and then uh, holding this sandpaper in place and then moving the puzzle on top of it. But eventually I started just using the sandpaper and rubbing the sandpaper on the face. Okay, now that the puzzle is completely sanded, I started polishing the pieces. You can sort of see what I mean by using moving the sandpaper instead of the puzzle here. When you just sand the puzzle like I did there, um, it leaves the puzzle really gray. So I like to use WD-40 to just stain the exterior. Now don't use WD-40 as a lubricant because it'll totally destroy the inner puzzle mechanism unless you use the silicone version. There is a silicone version of WD-40 that you can use for the interior of the puzzle, but this WD-40 is just used for staining the exterior of the puzzle. After doing all that stuff, there's a bunch of dirt and grime in the inside of the puzzle, so I disassembled it uh, one last time just to, so I could um, take all the pieces and clean them off with the towel.
after cleaning off all the pieces, I assembled the puzzle one last time into its solved position. After putting all the pieces together, I took some galaxy lube because that's what I had lying around and I just put it on all the interior faces just to give the puzzle a little bit of a better feel because I just cleaned off all the faces and it was feeling really dry. After working that around for a little bit, I tightened the screws a little bit and then I put all the caps back in place. Now the puzzle was pretty much finished. All right guys, so I just finished stickering the puzzle up and I really, really like how this puzzle looks. There, there's, a, there's a couple differences from between this and a usual uh, hex prism. Um, the first would be that uh, because I designed uh, the, this cube in CAD instead of uh, actually uh, cutting it and filling it like you usually would, the stickers are a lot um, closer fit and there's a lot uh, smaller Florian holes than you would usually see. And I sort of like that look. Um, and then other than that, it's a little bit uh, differently proportioned. So it's a little bit um, like the, the ratio of this, like the height to the width or whatever, um, is a little bit off. And uh, I like that too. Um, another thing you may notice is that I used black on black again. And I actually really like how that looks because the uh, PLA, when you sand it and everything, it doesn't leave like a black finish, it's actually like a gray. And I really like how the, the sort of like shiny black stickers sort of bring that out. Um, but yeah, other than that, this is a, I, I really, really like how this puzzle ended up looking. Um, it's a lot different from like sort of what I usually make, uh, although it ended up looking sort of more like my usual puzzles than I thought it would because I used the same um, sticker shades and everything. Um, but like the the turning is great for it being like a mini 3x3 in the center and I'm just like really surprised by how well this puzzle turned out and because this puzzle was a success I'm gonna be doing this uh, a lot more often. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to leave a, a like and a subscribe and all, all that, that doodah stuff. Um, but what I really like to know is which 3x3 mods should I make? So um, the mods, I'm gonna be making them by doing extension mods. I'm not actually gonna be doing real 3x3 uh, three three mods, but I wanna know what 3x3 three three mods you guys wanna see me try making with the extensions. Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll mess up, maybe I'll, I'll succeed, maybe I'll fail, who knows? So yeah, if, if, if you guys like would like this to see a series of these, yeah, definitely let me know down below in the comments. Anyhow guys, that's all for uh, today's video. I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.